for this one, I read that Liam said that he got excited about it because someone wasn't going to be taken. Is there anything about the script that kind of piqued your interest when you first saw it like that? Yeah, the thing is that uh, the, the, even the second one was not really obvious. You know, after you know the first one was not made uh, as a franchise. Never. It was just a movie and it became huge. So, you know, the studio said, okay, we have to make a franchise. When the second, when they, they, they sent me the, the script for the second one, I was not even me, you know, I was not convinced about the fact that somebody has to be, had to be taken again. But uh, we tried to find solutions to make the, you know, a, a revenge movie more than a taken movie. And uh, so after the second one, we, both of us, we told everybody, no, no way, never again, and so on. And uh, when we, I was in New York, last year, year and a half ago, and uh, Liam, you know, told me, uh, can we have dinner? And he told me about this, he said, okay, Luke told me about this, this idea, so uh, the thing that uh, we can make it. So I was not very convinced in the beginning because, you know, it's very hard when you make a franchise because 50% of the critics, of the people, they would tell you, you know, you did nothing because the first one was good and after, you know, it's always, so you have to take on yourself, say, okay, let's go again and try to, to make my, 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 my job. So uh, after a couple of months, because it took months, say, uh, because I, I love the story, you know, that kind of a, a very strange thing with different uh, different approaches uh, and dots learned new things. So I said, okay, let's go. So it's uh, it was more, yeah, nothing was been planned. I think that even uh, Fox and Luke, they, it took a long time to get just to think about what, what, what could that's going to be new you know, to make another one. How is it taking it from that idea of no one getting taken to what we see in the final cut? Is there any big differences or maybe even different bad guys you might guys might have played with? The thing is that um, we try to make a more mature movie and you know to, to do something more yeah more mature more uh, serious dangerous and so on so we we wanted to then endanger our character Brian Mills much more than before even much more more than before because when Brian Mills has been taken and then taken too, you know that he, he will find a solution. But when he has, he's been uh, chased by the police and uh, has been uh, uh, accused of uh, a murder, it's another story, totally another story. So uh, we really try to push on this and try to find around him not the regular bad guys that he used to have, you know, uh, as opponents. And uh, having a couple, uh, as Dotsler, played by the by uh, Forrest Whitaker, was something huge, you know, in front of him. And was there any anything with the stunts in terms of kind of, kind of your growth as a director? I guess that's what I'm going for here. With taking on Taken Three, is there any kind of progression with like your craft that you saw on it? Yeah, the thing that uh, Taken One was shot a little like a, a '90s movie. You know, it's very square, very you know when you see the movie today, it's very strange. It's a, about 10 years ago, so uh, it looks like something very classical, you know, even the way of it. And uh, when I arrived in Taken 2, I, my way of f filming is totally different, you know, I'm, uh, I come from another, you know, uh, world and so on, and uh, it's, mo it's much more organic, more violent, more, you know, uh, it's, it's not classical at all. So uh, I've got my own editors, they are they are formed on, on the way I'm shooting, so it's uh, it's very totally different. So on Taken Two, we 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 already changed uh, the writing of the uh, of the movie, and in the third one, we understand everything. We raise up everything to make uh, because you know we are French people. We're making a, a worldwide movie, but we sh with French uh, with a French point of view it means that we don't have the same money, we don't have the same uh, thing that I'm in a big American movie. Yeah, so. The thing is that we have to, and we love to do this, we, we, we work like in a family and so on, so it's uh, it's very strange and the people they don't really understand the way we're working because they say they, everybody's talking about the French touch. It's not the French touch, it's just about a family that we created about 10 years ago and that we know how to make that kind of movie today. And that kind of movie has, has very specific writing, very spe specific uh, uh, form, so you know it's very hard to explain it, the way we, we, we arrived there, you know. How is it tackling this as kind of almost like a family drama to a point? Because a lot of people go to see it to t see Liam Neeson take out all these bad guys, but at the same time, it's very emotional. And the stuff that I think Kim deals with more so than anything in this movie, like when I process that in my head, I can't imagine her tapping into that for like a fun action movie. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, 
the whole subject from the beginning is about a family. This is the, the only movie, the only big franchise based on the family topic. You know, everything is on the family. So the thing that when you have other uh, big uh, heroes on uh, other big, uh, you know, blockbusters, the whole uh, they come from nowhere, from Mars, whatever. You know, they are ex uh, super agents, whatever. Brian Mills is just the regular guy, he's just the normal guy, the guy, the, 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 the father next door, you know, the, the guy you can meet, you know, uh, in real life. He's not muscle, he's not young, he's not, you know, it's, it's just somebody, he's not perfect. So uh, the people, they like that kind of hero because suddenly they could imagine that they could have a hero looking like them or people that they could, you know, that they would, they would, they would see in the street one day. So uh, I don't say that, you know. Liam is somebody, an average guy, but he's not a super muscle hero. So it's uh, it's a total. It, the thing makes 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 this franchise unique, and therefore whatever we have done for the first one to the third one, we always kept everything on family topics. And when we decided to kill the mother, then we endangered everything in the you know on the family and the highest level we could uh, we could we can endanger. So. It's just uh, it's just the logic of the of the of the franchise, you know, that which respected from the beginning. How is it for you as an actor's director going from one to the other? Because I imagine top priority is nailing these massive action scenes. Because I was watching some of the B-roll and I'm surprised by how much really actually happened. But then, you know, I'm thinking about the scene in the bathroom, and that's a very emotional one-on-one -on -one conversation. The thing is that making action is uh, quite e not easy. You know, I don't really want to be pretentious, but. It's, I, I, I'm working with a lot of people, they are very, very good, so we know that when we have something on the paper, it's, you know, for example, the plain thing is very thin when you read the script, but you have to sing and you have to create something huge and to make like a symphony at the end. So uh, you are working with your staff and, uh, we are, you, you know, we, we, I'm working with the same people for a long time, they have a lot of ideas, they are, you know, and they like to give me a lot of ideas and we, can, we, we build the thing and the, the, the action little by little altogether on an emotional sequence it's totally different you're alone you know you're just alone so when you were you know when you're working uh, on that kind of for example the bathroom thing or uh, the, the phone call you know when he's calling uh, when he's calling uh, uh, Maggie um, everything is being just think about the script just think about the line just create the thing about the dialogues try to you know, change it little by little to make it maybe more, you know, accurate, much more emotional and so on. So it's totally different. And when you arrive on the, on the set and you're going to shoot that kind of sequence, you're alone, you know, you don't know anything because it's just the magic of, uh, the magic thing of making a movie, you know, it happens or it doesn't happen, you know. So it's just a question of confidence with your actors about the talk you have to with them some some actors you have to talk a lot to them and some actors you don't have to talk a lot with them it's just a question of uh, of uh, yeah it's a human question it's more than it. so it's two different uh, two different things directing actions and acting sequences and uh, directing um, and directing uh, an emotional thing but when you make that kind of movie today you have to have that both things you know to 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 the, 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 that kind of skills you know otherwise it's just a, another action, very, very cool movie. But now you've done so many great con like hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences and also these big stunt sequences. Is it kind of a game of one-upping yourself every time to try to get the biggest and best thing you could do? I don't think that it's a game. It's, um, it's more being curious and more being... Uh, I'm not a fan of action movies, or, you know, big action movies. I, I don't... Uh, I don't... Uh, what is it? <laughs> I don't really know what that is. <laughs> I'm not a fan of action movies. It means that I'm not a fan. Of my my, my preferred movies are maybe more uh, Kubrick, Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick movies or David Lynch or that kind of thing. But uh, I like human people. I, I f I'm fearing violence much more than everybody. I'm, I, I, I come from uh, the French suburbs, so I know the French, the Parisian suburbs, so I know what is violence. So I'm very, very close to that, to that fearing, and and, and I'm scary. I'm scared about all this. So. When I try to make a movie, I, I just want to, uh, I, I don't want to provoke anybody, I just want to to, 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 to solve a problem inside me, you know, so, so when I'm, I'm shooting a, an action and I'm creating an action sequence, I try to uh, to be the first audience, I try to be, you know, 
to be uh, to be emotionally uh, touched by this sequence because I am I am the first audience of the movie. And now, can you tell me a little bit about going from your first cut to what we see on screen now? Because I remember watching the Taken Two unrated cut, and yeah. you know, I kind of wish I had seen some of that the first and, time. And around. the unrated cut was <laughs> was already, you know, the the last last cut, you know, before the last last cut. No, the thing is that uh, when you make a movie, and especially when you have a schedule uh, like this, because we shot, we finished the shooting of the movie in mid July, so uh, when you have to uh, to run to uh, to cut the movie, to, uh, to to make the whole post production, and I am everywhere. You know, I read some, I read some somewhere that the the DOP was a great DOP because he made a huge helicopter aerial views. But it, the thing is that he never did this. I, I I am in the in the shopper during this view, so I am during the whole movie. I I want to do the whole thing. I don't have second units. I don't. You know, I I'm shooting everything, every little thing. So. Uh, from the beginning to the end of the movie, uh, it's a, it's a big process. It's like a, a night ride, you know. You you have a script and uh, you want to put your own things. You want to make your own movie, and little by little, you know, it is your movie. It's your baby, and little by little, you are you try to make it uh, much personal, and uh, then appear some, you know, one day like a red alert. Say, like audience, does the audience understand what I'm doing? So this is the second, you know, the second thing is that suddenly you have to, to be uh, mature enough to say, okay, where and where is the movie gonna be shown? Everywhere in the world. Okay, so is the movie gonna be shot everywhere in the world? Everybody has to understand it. So little by little, you have to rebuild all these little things of narrations, and you have to tell the story in a clear, clearer way. And then this is the only, my only, you know, guess uh, and my only. Will when I'm sh when I'm when I'm, when I'm cutting a movie is to make everybody understanding what I'm saying, you know. No. So the cut is not a, something personal. Say okay, this shot could be longer or whatever. I'm gonna do another movie one day, and I'm gonna have much more time to, you know, with my actors maybe to have a 15 or 20 seconds shots, you know, uncut and so on. But when you make a movie like Taken, you need to have that kind of pace, that kind of rhythm, because the worldwide audience. Is waiting for that kind of movie and not a David Lynch or a Stanley Kubrick movie. And now I know they say this is the last Taken, but should another Taken opportunity come up, is there anything that like you have not gotten to explore yet that you think could make a good fourth movie? Well, the thing is that uh, <laughs> I, I don't really know how they how they could you know uh, how they could make uh, another one, but um, I know what I want. I want a Brian Mills prequel. <laughs> Maybe, but you know, it's it, it will not be uh, the uh, Liam anymore. So, sure, it will be interesting. Uh, it was very interesting because when we were in uh, in London, the European, I don't know why, the suddenly they told us, "Why are you? Did you think about a spin-off about uh, Dotsler? A spin-off about Dotsler? Nobody really thought about this. So, uh, today, uh, it's very clear for everybody that it's it's the last one. It's the last one because. It's we told everybody it ends here means you know it ends here couldn't be more clear, but um, if this one works well, you never know what uh, you know. The problem is that the studios everywhere in the world and productions uh, producers they don't have so much idea. So the problem is that when you have a character like Brian Mills working so well, I understand that they want to create another story because the combination the chemistry is working so well that why trying to create something and not be sure about the results you know this is the thing that we are, we are we are seeing so many movies which are not bad but which are not very good or good enough to make you know something you know huge for the audience so this is the the, the balance between uh, creativity and uh, I mean, sure that you know with something that you know that could work. Why being you know why going somewhere? Else? So normally there would wouldn't be any 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 any, any taken for normally.